Hi everyone, my name is Eduardo Isaac Berry, and today we'll be looking at how to find the arc length of a parametrized curve. Now, a parametrized curve is not really a function in the typical sense, because a parametrized curve is more of a point moving around in space in some organized pattern. That's why, unlike a function in 2D, it can cross over its own path, it can of course go backwards, it can go up, it can go down, it can do both of these things, and I mean, it can do whatever it wants. It can even trace over itself. So, can you uh, do like very simple, uh, like y equal to x squared? Yeah, you can define y equals x squared parametrically, but that's not very hard. What you really want to do is usually you want to define functions that can't be defined the normal way as y of x. That's because that's, if, the, that's the idea. Because parametrically defining y equals x squared is as simple as writing x equals t and then y equals t squared. Nothing new. Okay. That's why you generally have to write functions parametrically that don't have a form as y of x. So, how do we find the arc length of a parametric y of x? So, if we have a function like y of x is equal to x squared, which looks something like this, or maybe, no. Yeah, okay, that's better. So, if we have y of x is equal to x squared. Everybody understand it. Everybody knows it. So everybody can use this one as an example to understand the parameters. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a very tiny section of it. But that section still has a little curve. So we're going to take a very tiny section of that. But this still has a little bit of curve. So we can repeat this process infinitely until what we obtain is approximately a straight line with the slope of the straight line being the derivative at that point. Which implies that, of course, the height that it travels over this duration is dy and its length is dx, which makes the slope dy dx. Okay. So, given this, what does that make this length right here? Well, by the Pythagorean theorem, it should obviously be dy squared plus dx squared. But we have to integrate the whole thing. Because we're adding up each of these infinitesimal little segments over the whole path from point 1 to point 2, which is exactly why we have to integrate this quantity. But you can simplify it by factoring out dx squared within this square root, which gives you all right. So now we're finally getting some. As you can see, for example, if you want to plug in y of x is equal to x squared, you just take the derivative with respect to x, and you plug in. Now, in this case specifically, though, evaluating it might be a teensy bit difficult. But you get the same answer, right? Yeah. So, now, here's what we're going to do. You cannot do the exact same thing if you have a messy parametric function. No, a parametric function can look like this, or you could be dealing with a parametric function like this, a cardioid, or maybe something like this. Who knows? Uh, you could even be dealing with something that looks like this. So, I mean, you can be dealing with all kinds of different parametric functions. And what a regular person might say is, hmm, can I just split these up into individual segments that don't violate 
the rules of a function. But the problem with that is we have three segments now, four segments, um, let me see, five segments. Now we have a sixth segment. Now we have a seventh segment. Now we have eight different integrations to make. And it takes a while to find out the equations for each one. So what's the process that we should take instead? Every single parametric function is defined as x is some function of time, y is some function of time. It's basically a point whose coordinates are determined by how much time has passed. So, you might be asking, what's the curve for if it's just a point? Well, the curve is the path that the point traces out along its way. So, for example, you could write um, y of x equals x squared as t comma t squared, even though that's no fun. So, you might be asking, how do we find arc length when it comes to parametric curves? Well, it's really similar. You take the same dx squared plus dy squared thing, you take the integral of it, but this time, you factor out dt squared. And of course, you might say there was no dt squared factor to begin with. Exactly, that's why we now have to divide by dt squared here. So that's just the integral of dt dx dt squared dy dt squared. And boom. I mean, if you plug in the whole t comma t squared thing, it gives you the same results, so that's nice. So let's try it on an example where we already know the arc length, for sure. So, for example, sine of t comma cosine of t. Now it should be pretty obvious to you that this draws a circle. What you might not realize is that, just make sure what I'm saying is correct. Yeah, what you might not realize is that this is the circle that it draws. So, of course, at t equals 0, where is it going to be? It's going to be at 0, 1. So it's going to start from here instead of here, like you might expect. And which way is it going to go? It's going to go this way. So it's going to draw it clockwise. Meanwhile, if you swap these two, it's going to do an anti-clockwise turn. All right. So, I mean, that implies either way we do it, it should give the same result. But anyhow, if we take the derivative of sine of t, that just gives you cosine of t. And if you take the derivative of cosine of t, that just gives you negative sine of t. So that gives you the square root of sine squared t plus cosine squared t dt. This is, of course, the square root of 1, which is 1, which means, I mean, it gives us 1. Well, I mean t. And, of course, if you're integrating in radians from 0 to 2 pi, that will just give you t from 0 to 2 pi, which is 2 pi minus 0. Very hard to argue with that assessment. So, now we have our wonderful theory tested. So, what can we do with it? Well, lots of things. For example, we can even introduce a third dimension. Pretty cool, right? So we can, for example, say sine of t, cosine of t, t, even though that might be a little bit difficult to find the arc length of. Would you look at that? It draws a cool little heel.
So, you can find the arc length of something simple in these coordinates too. Follow the exact same process. Alright, now you can we can finally do something actually challenging. Like let's say e to the 2t sine 2t comma e to the 2t cosine 2t comma 3. So what do we do with this? Now you might already recognize this still should be pretty easy given e and sine and cosine are still pretty much brothers. So what do we have here? Well, we have the integral of the square root of, what's this? Oh, well, we first have to take the derivative. So that just 2e2t two cosine 2t two plus 2e2t two sine 2t. Two then we have to take the derivative of that, which is 2e2t, two well, negative sine 2t plus 2e2t two cosine 2t. So we have 2e2t two squared. Oh, and this goes to 0 when you take the derivative. So you have 2e2t two squared multiplied by cosine 2t um, plus sine 2t squared. Have the longest memory, and then plus two e to the two t squared. Mm -hmm. Cosine two t minus sine two t squared, and of course plus zero. So what do we get? We can already factor out the two e to the two t. And let's add some bounds to our integral for fun. Let's say 0 to 1 for t. So we get 2e to the 2t multiplied by the square root of, well, what's inside this? Cosine 2t plus sine 2t squared is just cosine squared 2t plus sine squared 2t plus 2 cosine 2t sine 2t. And the funny coincidence is that cosine 2t minus sine 2t does the exact same thing, but makes this negative. So what does that give us? This cancels out, this cancels out, this goes to 1, this also goes to 1, which means we just have 2 times the square root of 2 from this integral multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the 2 d dt, which is just equal to the square root of 2 times e to the 2t, since we add a half coefficient, which cancels out this 2 after integration, from 0 to 1, which is just the square root of 2 e to the 2 minus the square root of 2. And we can even calculate that. And it's approximately 9.033. So that's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.